Hello and welcome to Russians with Attitude. It is uh, day three of the war, and the war is far from over. So aside from uh, military news that we covered on Twitter, the most major developments were also in the sphere of informational war. And sadly, Russia is not doing that great in informational war at all, because PSYOPs uh, upon PSYOPs are appearing out of nowhere and uh, every single Western media is uncritically using it. There was uh, the ghost of Kiev, uh, the sunflower seeds grandma, there was <laughs> the snake island uh, Mujahideens, right? Uh, what else was there? The two downed Russian transport planes uh, yeah, yeah. after, I think, I think it's now around 18 hours since they claim to have downed a Russian transport plane. And the only footage they have provided as so-called proof of this turned out to be a Ukrainian plane that was shot down by Russian forces. Yeah, and the Kievan high rise uh, with the Grad missile destroying uh, a couple of apartments. Well, it's yeah, not I, confirmed. I think, I think it's still... I think it's still unclear. Yes, I mean, yes. it might have been, it might have been a Russian missile. It might have been a Ukrainian one. It, I mean, it doesn't really ma matter, even if it was a Ukrainian one. These things just happen in war. Um, I wouldn't make too much of it, uh, as far as I heard. Um, I've heard, I've seen no reports. Otherwise, no one was injured. So that is good news. In any case. Quite miraculously, actually, because people were told to stay at homes. Uh, so, yeah. And another thing, the Western audience and their insanely warped view of the matter, because war is fun and everyone loves uh, following war news. And everyone uh, thinks of themselves as a war specialist because uh, <laughs> first, uh, <laughs> we all played Call of Duty, right? We know what we're talking about. And second, because we followed a bunch of wars before. And the Call of Duty... Yeah, we are, we, we, we are war specialists. We are alumni of the Syria and Donbass School of Military <laughs> yeah, Analysis. Yeah. But uh, people who only played Call of Duty, they uh, seem to fall for another psyop that Russian army is incredibly weak uh, because they didn't capture Kiev in one day. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm, it's driving me insane. Even many Russians are saying this. I think this is just because of the like, like stuff like the 24 hour news cycle yes, and yes. the wide availability of smartphone footage and so on. There's just so much information that you that people feel like something has happened all the time and they completely forget how long military operations actually take. I mean, the Armenian Azerbaijani war two years ago on a territory that was, I don't know, is Nagorno Karabakh even larger than Crimea? Probably not. I think not. It's, it's, it's a, even that one took 44 days. It took US forces uh, 17, I believe, days to reach Baghdad during the last invasion. Yeah, the Russian weeks, army is currently moving with lightning speed. There hasn't been any uh, military operation in recent, uh, like in the recent history of warfare that can compare in speed. In On the Crimean front, they went 160 kilometers deep into Ukrainian territory in one and a half days. That is insane. So yeah, uh... I saw some guy who was pretending, or maybe he was actually some big uh, US uh, military commander who were raving on that uh, Russian army has stuck in the 70s. It doesn't resemble a modern fighting force. He is uh, right in the sense that uh, what the Russian military has been doing is ignoring the last 50 years of Western military science. And the Russian forces are using airborne assaults behind, deep behind enemy lines. And they're doing this with great success. Alone, the, the, the Kiev airport operation, I'm pretty sure that it will be included in military textbooks uh, for the next decades. Yeah. Also, they really uh, are trying to be gentle, as gentle as possible, and uh, strike uh, very in the surgical manner, which Americans uh, didn't do in Iraq, let's say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They would just flatten the city. Russia has incredibly powerful artillery, 
and everyone knows that. So we could just destroy Kharkov and move on. But uh, obviously it's not in our plans. So that's why it's taken a bit longer than just uh, carnage and uh, genocide, right? Another thing I wanted to talk about, it uh, plays a bit into this, into how uh, the Russian armed forces are doing their actions in a very restrained way, is that, um, you know, both in Russia and Ukraine, we have been bombarded with propaganda the last eight years that we now hate each other, right? Yeah. And that Ukrainians hate and fear Russians, that they will never forgive us and we will never be brothers anymore and so on. There was uh, literally the title song of Maidan was uh, some girl singing about how we will never be brothers again. But literally in all the videos taken uh, by ordinary Ukrainian civilians, we can see that no one is afraid of the Russians, like in a good way. You know, there are car, there are civilian cars driving towards advancing military vehicles, um, like just overtaking them on, on the highway. They are stopping next to each other and asking uh, the Russian soldiers, like, uh, where will you fight? Where are they allowed to go? And so on. Pedestrians are filming infantry dispersing through the streets. Yeah, can you imagine an Iraqi Arabic guy uh, talking up with some U.S. commando or whatever? It's uh, yeah, ridiculous. yeah. It's kind of like it's kind of like like eight years of this insane propaganda can just be thrown into the garbage because the Russian military in Ukraine, even in the places where it is not accepted as uh, their own people or liberators, it is not feared as an outsider. As you said, it's impossible to imagine peaceful Armenians in Karabakh, jumping out at an Azerbaijani tank. And uh, will it calmly pass by? No, you can't imagine that, because the Azerbaijanis, if they see a car with Armenian license plates, they will probably shoot at it without even caring who's in it. Or at best, in the best case, they will uh, shoot up the car and take away their phones, money and papers and tell them to run away. And this isn't even like super bad or anything it's just an elementary precaution because they might be enemy saboteurs or just for the sake of caution so the enemy doesn't get like intel because these peoples they are real enemies and the armenians would of course do the same thing to azerbaijanis there is nothing personal here it's just a real war and a real ethnic conflict but in ukraine we see that no one no ukrainian believes that a Russian soldier will just shoot a Ukrainian for no reason. Like, it's all extremely obvious from all the footage that no one in Ukraine truly believes this, despite Ukrainian propaganda really going into overdrive. I mean, I've heard from people, even like uh, distant relatives and people I know that they are like in panic and some people do believe this. They are now, what I heard, um, what I personally was told by people living in Ukraine, um, is that the Ukrainian authorities are spreading uh, the rumor that Russian helicopters are hunting civilian cars on the highways. I think they are spreading this so uh, Ukrainians don't uh, drive to the border and try to run away to another country. But it's not working, really. Like, some people do believe this, they are in panic, but um, most don't. And I think that is one of the most important lessons we can uh, we see in this conflict. To be frank, uh, they are not welcoming Russian forces with uh, flowers. And uh, they're either uh, scared, and rightfully so. I would also be scared probably if uh, uh, yeah, explosions uh, would... Uh, I would wake up every morning from explosions. But yeah, they don't fear Russians. They know how russians uh, operate and that they're not uh, crazy right yeah, uh, i mean I, I mean regarding flowers it depends i've seen lots of footage from uh, ukrainian cities where people take down ukrainian flags and put up russian flags even when the russian troops were still like many hours out in preparation um but mostly in the east of course in the far east of ukraine like in donbas in still unliberated Donbass mostly, but uh, yes, and some cities do fall without any resistance at all. But yes, mostly you're right, of course, it's just the last eight years have been really uh, like tough. It's like North Korean level total war propaganda all day, every day. Yeah. And of course this touches people. And yes, as you say, 
maybe the most Ukrainian civilians don't really like the Russian forces, but they are certainly not afraid of them. So what uh, are your predictions on uh, Kyiv, uh, attack on Kyiv? Would it be easy to take a city with uh, such an amount of uh, armed civilians and uh, not Honestly, only that? I have, yeah. I have no idea how Russian command is planning to deal with Kyiv. It's completely insane what the Ukrainian government has done. Uh, they have published numbers, they have distributed 25,000 Kalashnikovs, 10 million bullets, and they were giving out anti-tank weapons and grenades to civilians, to anyone, like not even checking papers. Yeah, and coupled with another news that they are now picking up some prisoners and uh, sending them uh, to war in exchange of pardon. An actual you know, criminals uh, who were giving out guns and masks. You know, it's like it's like... It's a confirmation of what Putin said about Ukraine being a Soviet creation. Like, yeah. they, the Ukrainian state didn't even last two days without, like, Prikaz uh, 227 and Strafbate uh, and stuff like this and uh, super Soviet style. It's, 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 like, it's like pure Stalinism what they're doing. It's like, it's like you know... The Russian government has announced, uh, like Putin spoke about the decommunization of Ukraine, and the official motto of the operation is denazification. And the Ukrainians are doing everything in their power to confirm these two goals by behaving like uh, the Stalinist USSR and like uh, the Germans in uh, like spring 45. <laughs> denazification then. Right. <laughs> yeah, which which by the way proves our claim from a while ago that uh, Putin is a libertarian. <laughs> Indeed, uh, people might think that we were wrong about Putin, but we were right. At least on that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, let's uh, recap uh, the last two days of war. What were the most major happenings? Is Kherson Russian? At this point, uh, yes, uh, Kherson is. Uh, although it's uh, it, there is conflicting information, mm, it appears that uh, our troops mostly passed Kherson and didn't really uh, establish control over the city, and they just kept driving in the direction of uh, Mariupol to help the Donetsk People's Militia because they have just taken Berdyansk Airport. And uh, Mariupol is currently being attacked by the forces of the Donetsk People's Republic. And the uh, Russian armed forces are now driving up the coast yeah. from past Pirdyansk to, uh, well, to attack Mariupol from the other side. They are targeting the airports, uh, not large cities. Uh, yeah, I feel that Mariupol will be probably one of the most bloodiest places in Ukraine. I think it depends. I'm already hearing like unconfirmed reports that uh, Ukrainian forces are retreating from the area. And uh, I guess it depends a bit. I don't know how many uh, Azov forces there are in Mariupol. And I guess it depends a bit on how many there are. Like if there's 20 guys, uh, it won't matter much. But if there's several hundreds, I think it will depend on what they will do. I've seen some mm, if footage they smart, of real if... savageness uh, in Mariupol. It was not confirmed, of course, but uh, it was uh, claimed that civilians who tried to leave Mariupol in cars uh, were stopped by Ukrainian forces and uh, some mm -hmm. of them shot. Yes, I have heard this too, that they are stopping civilians from uh, leaving Mariupol because they want to use them as living shields. Because the Russian armed forces are not hitting civilian areas and will not hit civilian areas. Uh, so, and I've seen confirmation of this. I've seen locals post photos and maps. Uh, the Ukrainians are placing artillery next to schools and other civilian targets in Mariupol, which is uh, obviously uh, evil. Like, a, like I try to avoid uh, value and moral judgments in my reporting mostly, right? But this is just insanely evil shit. Well, uh, some could argue that uh, Donetsk and Lugansk rebels did something similar when they defended the cities. 
I can't talk about this right now. It's been eight years ago, but I don't remember any uh, examples of that. Well, yeah. To be honest. So uh, they there were in city uh, fighting, uh, of course. I mean, urban fighting is always a bit like this, but uh, I think there's a difference between just fighting in a city and specifically placing like rocket artillery near schools. It was not uh, so. So right? you're. So your enemy won't hit them. Is it uh, just Kherson then and Chernobyl in two days? Well, there has been advancement um, around 60 kilometers in Donbass. And several small towns have been uh, taken. Um, of course, the attack in Donbass, uh, it's going slowly because of two reasons or like relatively slowly uh, because of two reasons. Uh, first of all, it's the most heavily fortified uh, part of Ukraine. There are three lines of defense. The defenses are extremely deep and uh, heavily fortified, and some of the best Ukrainian troops are there. And the second one is that uh, basically the Donbas troops are trying to tie up the Ukrainian troops in the region so they don't uh, join the Ukrainian troops in Kharkov. A bit of a catch-all, I mean, it's in around Chernigov area, uh, from Konotop to Kiev. If they yeah. manage to go far to Kiev, uh, then Chernigov would be encircled. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Chernigov is already mostly blockaded. Mm -hmm. So the most important uh, Russian uh, goal here is to take Kiev. Do you believe the the claims that Zelensky has fled to Lvov? Uh, I don't know. It's possible. So imagine uh, Russians are taking Kiev, but Zelensky is either in Lvov or Polsha. <laughs> maybe he maybe he left a body double. <laughs> body double. Yeah, and he's issuing the commands uh, to. But uh, yeah, Ukrainians will probably start surrendering. But uh, there will be some holdouts, and it's gonna last uh, a couple of months then. Mm -hmm. But uh, sitting down to talk, is it possible at this point? Well, apparently not really, because for one thing, um, the Ukrainian... Go so basically the Russian government is saying that uh, the Ukrainian army has to stop fighting before there are any negotiations. And uh, the Ukrainian government is equating the... <laughs> Russian demands before uh, negotiations as um, an unconditional surrender, and they will not agree to this. And second, I've uh, heard and seen um, something about the American government exerting pressure on Ukraine not to uh, surrender. Yeah. So, uh, and today, um, well, basically, Ukraine will not enter negotiations on Russian terms, and the Russian uh, government today has said that since the Ukrainian army will not negotiate, they are, you know, they actually took a break, the Russian forces. That's why it was uh, a bit quiet the last 12 hours or so. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, um, because they were expecting negotiations to begin. But negotiations did not begin, the Ukrainian side refused. And now the Russian Ministry of Defense has announced that they have given the order to advance in full force on all fronts. So I guess uh, an attempt at negotiations will be made the next time something major happens. Maybe if Mariupol falls, to, maybe if Mariupol falls today. Some of the outcomes uh, of uh, this invasion are all already happening. It's becoming known to the public. Swift will be turned off right was it confirmed i'm not sure i think that uh Still i'm actually it. not sure i haven't had... yeah they are now actively discussing it again after they said that they will not do it at first um i think the most uh the greatest opponent of this in the european union were like italy and germany but uh, i think they have uh, switched their opinions or have been told to change their opinions and i guess it might actually happen now and also and also germany is going to deliver anti-tank weapons to ukraine now uh after saying for months that they will not in any case send weapons and poland is, uh, and in general poland is also sending a convoy with weapons but to be honest i can't imagine these convoys making it into ukraine 
I mean, they will probably not hand the weapons over on Ukrainian territory mm -hmm. because that would be too dangerous. Um, I think the Germans and the Polish and whoever will um, give the Ukrainians the weapons on Polish territory. And I could imagine a barrage of Russian missiles and rockets hitting that convoy the second it enters Ukrainian borders again. So I wouldn't bet on any of these weapons really making it yeah, into Ukraine. It might be just empty promises because uh, the West really does nothing to Ukraine. I'm not sure. Uh, did uh, Zelensky actually hope uh, that it will uh, station some peacekeepers or whatever? Uh, the Ukrainian idea of reality. I mean, I mean, yes, Ukrainians have always thought that, that, that like America would immediately declare total war on Russia. It's like they slept uh, through 2008 war. The thing is also, even if they didn't expect uh, America to directly engage, um, they have been whipped up by nationalist uh, propaganda for eight years about how they are invincible and Russians are all stupid orcs. So, um, you know, they do, many do actually believe this. I mean, they still believe it. They are, they are like posting about Russia losing 4,000 people in the first day and how they are destroying hundreds of tanks and dozens of planes and stuff like this. And they actually believe this. Yeah, c credibility of Ukrainian sources uh, is... Uh... It's literally zero. It's, uh, it's, it, it's almost everything they are posting is fake. Like, um, the main difference between Russian and Ukrainian psyops so far has been that um, Russia just isn't telling anyone anything. Right. Uh, the, 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 the Russian forces are extremely secretive. Uh, it is this is supposed to change now. Uh, Peskov, uh, Putin's press secretary, has announced that the Ministry of Defense will now share a lot more information with Russian media, which I guess is good news for the Russian info war. But the Ukrainian info war, it's it's insane. They uh, know that every Western media outlet will repeat everything they say without fact checking, uh, without uh, with zero critical thinking. So they make the most absurd claims in the hopes to demoralize uh, the Russian side somehow. Or it is just to make uh, like 40 year old liberal woman in uh, America feel good. Yeah. Maybe that's the point. The 13 of the Snake Island, the ghost of Kiev. There, there will be movies about those heroes. <laughs> uh, the, uh, it is such a common Western tactic uh, to lie and then to correct uh, yourself, right? Oh, edit. It was a total fake in fabrication. Sorry, when everyone forgets about it. Uh, so yeah, the wine moms will uh, remember the ghost of Kiev. Who is the ghost of Kiev? <laughs> Actually, I kind of missed out. Um, it was um, an unnamed uh, jet pilot who supposedly shot down well there are different accounts some say six some say 20 russian planes in one day and uh, as proof they used footage from some video game and a photo that was taken in like 2018 from some uh, ukrainian uh, military exercise yeah Incredible. In Paris, there is a big protest against uh, Putin and for Ukraine. Did uh, Berlin have any of that? Yes, I'm sure. I didn't. Um, you probably know that I'm not following any news that are not related to the war right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I have, uh, like, at, at uh, the time of 9 a.m. this morning, I had been... Uh, autistically uh, uh, reading 40 uh, telegram channels and uh, having three google maps tabs open uh, for 24 hours straight based so i i don't know anything about what is happening in the world uh, <laughs> aside from that <laughs> maybe some people are wondering who know russian where are those channels what is the best uh, channel with uh... um i will i will post a list of uh, yeah more Top or less five. reliable telegram channels on our telegram channel yeah 
Um, it's also I would advise everyone to join our Telegram channel because in the case of a Twitter account getting banned, uh, which I don't know how likely it is, but I've seen like Ukrainians uh, telling others to mass report our account. Um, I've seen people like I've also seen like Serbians calling us NATO shields. Oh, I don't know why. The anger of the Serbs. Um, how come? <laughs> I don't know. No, I love the Serbs. I love the Serbs. They're great people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if uh, the if Twitter or like the Western media establishment is uh, approving of our reporting. Um, we're growing extremely fast. We're up 20,000 Twitter followers within three or four days, which is insane, by the way. Yeah. Um, so for the war telegram channel in case like i don't know anyone shuts us down yeah it would be nice and to I have will at least uh, 5000 on telegram then uh, we will be quite invincible really right so now what should be the war watchers should focus our attention to what is the most interesting happening in ukraine right now well i think uh, right now what's most interesting is uh, I think there is stuff happening in Kharkiv, but I'm not sure if it's a proper assault or just repositioning. So I don't know. Then the attack on Mariupol. I'm not sure if it will happen tonight or tomorrow. And the fresh Russian troops that are now entering from the better Russian side and uh, charging toward Kiev. I guess it's possible that uh, Kiev will also soon be completely surrounded and the attack will begin in proper. Yeah, and Vladimir Klitschko, the mayor boxer, will bravely defend it with a machine gun. It's uh, so surreal. Kiev is such a joke city in that uh, it's uh, ruled by a former boxing champion. I didn't like his style of boxing. Uh, he, the brothers Klitschko were always uh, mm -hmm. there was no show basically right so uh, he's not uh, uh, that intelligent and he talks very funny uh, he doesn't know Ukrainian Russian or any language at all it seems <laughs> that way so <laughs> it would be interesting who will be the first uh, major Ukrainian figure to surrender and, uh, and be a turncoat that's a great question actually I think we gotta watch out for that I'm gonna continue reporting. I'm gonna continue reporting for as long as my brain is able to. And uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter. Uh, recommend us to others. As w I still think it's like super ironic that the 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 Russian shell account that that laughs as like uh, Kremlin spies and pretends to be like uh, like operatives is uh, objectively the most neutral and balanced and. Uh, truthful uh, reporting account on the war. That's because we have respect for war. And people who lie, uh, it's uh, just disrespectful. Uh, they don't uh, understand. You know, that, uh, you know, that's actually a great point. I agree with this. All right. Carry on uh, <laughs> your reporting mission.